These are five workbench alternatives for woodworkers who are limited on space. If you have to take your tools in and out, these may be exactly what you need for your shop. I'm gonna use my handy dandy Woodworkers Chronicle, the only woodworking book to help you keep up with customer quotes and orders, link in the description. There's also room for sketches in the back. That's where we're gonna keep up with the ratings on each bench. I'm gonna rate each one of these workbenches in four categories. Number one, ease of use. Number two, space savings. Can they collapse down and actually save your space? Number three, stability. Are these stable enough to do work on? And number four, accessories. Do they have accessories that will level up each workbench to make them much more useful for you? I've got a few accessories to show you if you stick around. Before we get into the workbenches, there's two kits here I wanna show you that are workbench accessories that will be invaluable to you if you choose to pick up one of these three or you already have these with the 20 millimeter dog holes. They come in two different versions and these are so much less expensive than the Vestal version, it's unreal. You either get the kit with the four inch vertical or the 10 inch vertical clamps, depending on how much clamping capacity you need. Both of them have this two of these push clamps and I think these are the most invaluable in the set. I like the vertical clamps, but these are ones that are gonna stay out of your way. They're very simple to attach. You get one that's just a drop in dog and then you're gonna reach underneath with these bolts and just screw in from underneath. And they're fairly coarse threaded, so they go in very quickly. That's gonna give you a positive stop. Then on the other side, you're just gonna use any of those holes that'll get you close, and then you'll put the bolt in from underneath. Once that bolt is in underneath, then this clamp can push against that board and it's gonna lock it in place. These are extremely nice clamps. If you don't have a set of these and you have dog holes, these 20 millimeter dog holes, like on the Festool, as well as the Bora and the Works, Grab a set of these. Now let's get into the workbench comparisons and find out which one's right for your shop. First on the list is the Works Pegasus. It's like a sawhorse slash workbench. I've got two of these in the shop and I've had these for several years now. I bought both of these myself and I find these to be some of the most useful little small workbenches that you can have in the shop and they are actually very stable. I have stacked 400 pounds of weights on here, if I'm not mistaken, and they did just perfectly fine. Uh, no issues with that at all. There's literally a whole review video on these Pegasus workbenches that I'll link in the description. It's quite a bit older, but you can go back and check it out if you're interested. Now these retail for about 100 or $120 a piece, and they have some very unique things about them. First and foremost, they come with four dogs or dog stops that you can use on the very top and they do have dog holes up there. They also have two built-in clamps that store underneath it when not in use that you can use on the top that slide into the rails so you can clamp your material down when you're working. Now, a few things that make the Works Pegasus kind of unique and what I like about them is, one, if you can just use them as a standard sawhorse, you could, a two or four will literally set right here in each of these grooves. So if you have two of them, you can set up a bigger workbench than just this one. This is very handy for somebody that's in a very small space or if you just need some extra workspace, then you can move the project off of your regular workbench and use it on something like this. I use these a lot for staining and finishing, etc. When I just have a few small parts, I need to get finished. Also, I do like that workbench aspect of it because it does fold up and lock into place as a pretty good size workbench here. Your total size is about 31 by 25 inches. And again, it does have that built-in clamp that you could put in on each of these rails. Slides right in there. You can clamp down boards and things that you need to hold tight. And it does have those dogs that will help. You know, you can clamp against those, etc. And there are little small pockets on each side that you can put in small parts or fasteners, etc. while you're up here working. There's also a little small shelf down here on the bottom, but it's really not made for load bearing. It basically just locks everything kind of in place and keeps everything stable. For the size of this, holds a lot of weight. Again, the stack 400 pounds on there, it didn't bother it at all. And it's just a very, very useful workbench that doesn't cost too much. $100 is a little bit pricey. There are measurement scales on the top of the Works Pegasus. One's in metric, one's in imperial. Right beside the T-track that the clamp rides in. I don't know how useful those are, but they're there. These are about 30 inches high, which is pretty standard for portable workbenches, sawhorses, etc. So about the right height there. I'm a little bit, I guess, taller at about five foot 11. So I would like to see them a little bit taller. My workbench is about an inch or two taller than this one, but they are a really good size for sawhorses and extra workspace. As far as rating scales go, we're gonna use the two before rating scale. So we're gonna give this one five two befores on ease of use. It literally couldn't be easier. You could fold this up, you could fold it, flat, as flat as it goes, and then expand it very, very fast. It's simple, very simple to use. 
As far as space saving goes, again, very little space. You're talking three, four inches wide by 30 inches tall. Minimal space will give this a five as well. As far as stability goes, they are stable. However, however, if you put weight on the wings, you will see them flex a tiny bit. Not a lot, but you do see that flex. And if you put too much weight on one side or the other, you do have to be cautious of it tipping. So if you set something very heavy on one side, it could tip over. But if you put everything in the middle or if you're using these as like a workbench with a two before between the two of them, you won't have that issue. But because of that, we're gonna give this about a three out of five for stability. As far as accessories go, you do get the dogs, you do get the clamps. I wish the clamps were better. They're not the best. They're not Bessie level. Uh, they're kind of a very generic level of clamp. As far as the quality goes, they hold stuff, but not great. I wish those were better. Uh, the dogs are okay if you're gonna use those, but they're not nice to have. I do wish they would have included some dog clamps or something like that other than just the stoppers. And with that, we'll give them a three out of five for accessories. Next up is the Boris Centipede. Now, I've never owned one of these, but I've seen them around for a very long time. Uh, they got a good social media presence. And so I thought I need to buy one of these and try them out. <laughs> Y'all. Out of the box, as far as unboxing and setup, it's almost as easy as the Pegasus Workbench because the Pegasus literally folds out and it's ready to go. Uh, this is almost as easy. We're right behind it. Literally pull this out of the box and the base extends out. And then you just literally unfold the top and put on there. If you bought the top, the top is not included with the base unless you buy it as a combo kit. You can buy them separately. But the expandable base can be used as a workbench base for plywood or two befores, et cetera. It does come with four two before clips, I'll call them. You could just put those in those holes and then set a two before on there. Then you've got a basically a workhorse style setup there. And then also you can just put a piece of plywood on top of that, or you can put a plywood on top directly on top of this base and clamp it in with those included clamps. That's pretty nice. If you do opt for the work top right here that has the dog holes already drilled in it, perfectly spaced out, everything's nicely laid out, it's easy to set up. The great thing about how the cams work too is once when you put them in from underneath and tighten them down, they are below the surface of your worktop, so they're never going to be in your way. I would opt for this if you're getting the bore. I would highly recommend that if it's in your budget to go ahead and pick this up. It makes things a lot easier going ahead and having all of these dog holes on there. And then you can pick up aftermarket accessories that will level up this workbench and make it something that you may not even need to build your own workbench later if you're happy with this setup. I've got a friend that still, he started woodworking. Um, with a Bora Centipede workbench and he's still using it today because he loves it so much. And it's been several years ago. So these are very nice workbenches. Another great thing about the Bora is this thing will hold 2,500 pounds, 2,500 pound weight capacity. That's 1,133 kilograms if you want to convert that. This is one of the strongest immobile portable workbenches that I've seen on the market. I'm 200 pounds moving around on it and it's barely moving. Very stable uh, workbench. I like this one. This might be one of my favorites, but we got a couple more. One complaint I will have on the Bora is this, this top, when you go to put it on, ow, it just got my finger, literally. It, it is a finger getter. This could hurt, seriously injure you if you don't put this top on right because of the way this unfolds and folds back flat. There's a serious pinch point right there. And when you're folding it up underneath, in between there, this is literally pinched my fingers twice. So you have to kind of open it up from way out here. And you don't want to do it too harshly because it is MDF. So that's one, one drawback of this Bora Centipede. Now, let's log this in the Woodworkers Chronicle. Well, how are we going to rate this thing? Ease of use. This is very easy. I'm gonna give it a five as well because it takes minimal time to set this up. You literally spread it out, put the top on it, and you're good to go. You're talking less than a minute to get this thing set up and ready to work. That's key on people who are doing side hustles and, and hobby woodworkers who just, time is of the essence. I know how it is to try to manage family and work and getting in your woodworking. So setting something up super fast like this is key. Space savings. This thing takes up minimal space. This thing takes up likely about as much space as the Pegasus, if not less. This is the two foot by four foot version. There is a four by eight version. The top would likely take up a little bit more space, but the overall base will still collapse down in a minimal space. Given this five space savings, takes up very little space at all. Stability, this is a solid five. Rock solid. I was very surprised. I thought it would rickety a little bit, like be, be a little shaky. You know how those things are a lot of times you get something like that 
and it's a little wobbly. This isn't, it, it really is rock solid. I like that about it. It's gonna get a five there. Accessories, I wish they would have gave us some more accessories. They do give you the cam locks, which is kind of a necessity if you get the top. So that's not, I don't know that that's an accessory rather than a necessity, uh, but it does give you a few of those clamps like the two before clips as well as the plywood clips. So I will give them a little bit on that, but I'm gonna go two on a included accessories with this. This is the Ryobi Speed Bench. In other words, a portable speed bench. I just did a full review on this like a week or so ago. You can check out. I'll give you a quick overview of this. Out of the box, there is some setup involved, but I did find a video online that showed you exactly how to set this up that Ryobi put out. So after I watched the video, I was like, oh, it's simple. So I put it together real quick. As far as uh, weight bearing goes, they claim 400 pounds. I stacked 400 pounds of weight on it. Not a problem holding that up. I was surprised that when I took the weight off, the workbench top was perfectly still flat. So it's a very solid structure on here that I really like. This also converts into a hand truck. I was, I was corrected on the video, it's not a dolly, it's a hand truck. It does convert into a hand truck if you need to move boxes, et cetera, around. It's not bad if you had this on the job site or if you just needed some space savings. As far as space saving goes, it does fold up into that hand truck mode or dolly mode. And then you can move that back out of the way, store it in the garage or whatever and it won't be in your way. It does have some niceties on the top. In other words, it does have a scale up here on each side, one's in metric, one's in imperial, kind of a loose measuring. It wasn't perfectly accurate when I measured it out, so we'll knock them a couple of points for that, but it is useful for some rough measurements. I don't know that anybody's gonna be doing, trying to do it like precision woodworking on the top of this with the measurements, uh, but you could assemble on the top of it, but as far as getting measurements go, I probably wouldn't use it for that. Other than that, uh, you do get the Ryobi link system box that comes with this. It comes with one rail as well as the box that clips on. And, but other than that, you don't get much else. All right, Ryobi speed bench ratings. As far as ease of use goes, I'm gonna knock them a little bit here because of the assembly. The other two were basically already assembled. <laughs> I just pulled them out of the box. We'll give them a four there. It wasn't overly difficult. I just would like to see better instructions in there so you don't have to go watch the video. Space savings, it's a five. This thing takes up minimal space. And when it's folded up into hand truck mode, I don't think you'll worry about space with this. It does convert easily. So you don't have to worry about trying to fill with things and getting it collapsed back down. So that's a plus. Stability, this one is a little less stable than the other ones. Uh, just because of what it is, it's a two in one. So it's the uh, hand truck plus the workbench thing. And I just think that I, I, I would like to see it to be a little bit more stable. Not that it's unstable and will fall over, it just does wiggle a little. I don't think I would be unfair giving this a three in the stability rate. As far as accessories go, I'm gonna give them a two. I wish that the Ryobi link that come with it, if you're going to give me the box, a couple of things that were suggested in my other video, make those magnetic so when you do fold those up, then maybe the screws won't come out. And then also give us at least two boxes. You gave us room for two boxes, so two, two of those boxes or some other type of accessory there, maybe a tool holder style accessory that you could put on there for a drill or that would have been awesome. You should have put a, that would be awesome. Give us a drill holder there and then the little box with magnets in it, then I gave you a five but we'll give them a two. Number four out of five on the list is this, I've never named this, but we're gonna call it the Outlaws Portable Workbench. There's a whole build video on this. And if you need a workbench for a very small space or that takes up very minimal room that you just wanna build yourself, this is really easy. It does use the match fit system, the dovetail clamping system. This was designed and developed by Mike Taylor at taytools.com. And so you can thank him for this design. Now where this thing really shines is clamping capability. You can clamp on any side of this thing. You can use it on a set of saw horses or you can build your own feet for it like that will clamp on as well uh, here on each end. So they're, they're stable, not gonna move. And this is very inexpensive. You're just gonna use like a two by 10 to make this, one single two by 10 that makes the entire thing. And then you have your own portable workbench that you can literally clamp to the bed of your work truck. You can clamp it on a dining table if your wife doesn't get mad at you, on deck railings, on your own workbench if you just need to elevate something up off the workbench to get you more clamping capability. That's one of the, where this really does shine is clamping. It just has so many options for you. A really nice big, clamp out here on the front that allows you to clamp vertical boards, et cetera. And then on the top, we've got a basically a cam system that lets you, allows you to cam lock things into place. 
So if you're hand planing or sanding or doing any of that type of work on the vertical or the horizontal surface of the boards, you can do that on the top. There are plans available for this. I'll link to those in the description below if you're interested in that. Now rating this is a little tricky because it's mine. And so automatically there's gonna be some thoughts of bias here, <laughs> but space saving, I'll give it a four-ish. I'll give it a four just because it is compact, it is small, but it does have these feet that do come off if they're not clamped on there, you, you have to clamp those on and off. So we'll give it a four for space savings. It doesn't take up a lot of space, honestly. I'm just trying to be fairish as I can be. As far as ease of use goes, this after you get it built, this thing is very simple to make, but you do have to put the legs on if you don't leave them attached. I don't know why you wouldn't leave them attached once you have them on there. You can screw them in on the bottom too if you just want like a workbench, but they're there. Uh, ease of use, I'm gonna give it a three because you do have to build it. So that's gonna take you some time and some effort. So I'm gonna knock myself down a few points for that. As far as stability goes, I mean, maybe bias here, but it's rock solid once everything's attached. I, I like the stability of it, but I will give it a four just because it's mine. I think it's a five, but I'm trying to be fair as I can, you know? And then as far as accessories go, with the match fit system, accessories are endless, but you do have to buy those. So the match fit clamps and the match fit bit is really all you need to get started. But there are some other accessories that will allow you to help with extra clamping and other things like that that you could pick up too. I'll link to all of those in the description if you wanna check those out. So with the, you having to buy those accessories, they don't necessarily come with your workbench. You just have to add those extra when you pick up your lumber or if you, you know, order them on the internet or whatever, then the accessories part will knock off some. I'm gonna give it a three only because you have to buy those extra. But once you buy them, I use them all the time. I've used the match fit system on my cross cut sled. I use it on the jointing jig. So these are very, very handy for jigs and accessories for the shop anyway. So I highly recommend you pick them up. If you don't have some of these already, they're almost a must have these days because they're so easy to use and so versatile. Now don't run off, this is a Festool product. This is a Festool MFT table. You can get it in two different versions from what I can tell. One that includes a track and a protractor, in other words, where you can cut really accurate angles and one without the track and protractor, but you still get the table with the dog holes, et cetera. So if you're looking for a kind of an all-in-one solution that possibly, depending on your work, could take the place of a miter saw and a table saw, and I'll explain in a minute, this might be the way to go if you have the budget for it. Now, Festool tools are known to be very expensive, but they're also known to be very nice. I have worked with an MFT table at a friend's house, loved it. He actually built a cart for it, thought it was really cool. This has have legs underneath it that fold out, so you can literally use this as your workbench in small spaces and then store it away flat or against a wall or anything like that when not in use. This version come with the rail as well as the protractor and a fence with a stop block so you can make repeatable accurate cuts. One thing to note, it was fairly easy to set up. Out of the box, everything is like already assembled except the guide rail and protractor. You put those on the rails that are already attached to this and then square everything up. There's a video, very, very good video online. I'll link to in the description on how to set this up. Literally took me a few minutes and had everything square. First cut, cut this piece of plywood like butter, <laughs> butter smooth. And now you do want to be careful and not cut too deep into this table. It is meant to have a, basically a saw line underneath it. It's giving you zero clearance because when you cut on plywood, that's gonna give you very, very, very clean cuts on either side, no tear out, anything like that. This is made for stuff like that. Very accurate and very uh, clean cuts, no matter what you're cutting. And the good thing is here, if you don't have a Festool track saw, but you have a Makita or you have a Milwaukee, or you have the Triton or any of those, they will actually ride on this track that comes with this because Festo is using a standardized track. It also includes 20 millimeter dog holes all over the top for clamping and other operations that you can use dog accessories for, which we're gonna talk about. As far as ease of use with the track, the track will fold up so that you can load your material on there and then it folds back down and lands on a catch on the other side. You can literally raise this up and down, really good cut capacity. And then the long straight edge on the back gives you a fence to reference on so that you can put your boards up there. You can cut all the way up to 90 degrees from zero to 90 on the protractor so you can get most any angle you want for cutting angles. Now, how would it replace a miter saw? It's because of those angles you're able to cut here. So if all you do is cut angles, in other words, you're not beveling on your miter saw, this might could take the place of a miter saw if you don't have one yet or if you're trying to get safe space and get rid of it. 
And then also for table saw operations, it won't always take the replace of every table saw operation, but if you're just ripping stuff like boards and stuff like that, it can be accomplished with a track depending on how thick that material is. So if you're just ripping down plywood, yeah, this will take the place of it. If you want to rip two befores, et cetera, down, yeah, it's really not, the, the, not what this is meant to do. All right, so I brought these outside just so you can see what it looks like bringing them out other than the Ryobi that I rolled out here. By far the heaviest is the MFT as far as bulkiness goes and trying to get it outside. The bore is light as a feather. And then the Works Pegasus are also fairly light and the Ryobi is fairly light. So if you're moving things in and out, this may be a, a little less easy to set up and the legs are, aren't as easy to set up. But as far as stability goes, it's got a little wiggle to it. It's not as stable as say the Bora or even the Works Pegasus. It's about like the Ryobi as far as stable goes. It just kind of shakes and wiggles, which is why a lot of people leave it collapsed and build some type of cart if you're using it inside a shop. So you have to kind of take that into consideration too. As far as accessories go, if you buy this one with the protractor and the uh, fence, then you're getting that with it which is very, very handy and extremely useful to have. And then you also have the dog holes that you can pick up aftermarket accessories like we've shown earlier. And Festival has a ton, and aftermarket people do too, ton of add-ons for this MFT table. Uh, my friend Jason Bent just did a video on a router table that attaches to this on the rails outside here that's super cool. And then a lot of other accessories available as well. As far as height goes, you can see that the MFT is quite a bit higher probably three, four inches higher than the other ones. I like this work height personally. I'm five foot 11 again, so like it's right at my waist where these are a little lower, like mid thigh-ish. So this is a more comfortable working height for me personally. So if working height matters to you, this might be the way to go. So let's rate the MFT. As far as ease of use goes, setup's a little more cumbersome. It's not hard. It just takes a little bit longer to get everything set up, especially if you have to Put, up, put the rail on every time or the guide track on and then square everything up. So setting all that up is not hard. It is just time consuming if you're in a hurry and you just want to set things up very fast. I'm gonna give that a three on ease of use. Space saving, it's fairly space saving when the legs are collapsed, but it, it is less space saving than the other one. So I'm gonna give this a four. Uh, it does fold flat so you can stand it against the wall. So it's not taking up a ton of room, but it does take up more room than the Pegasus and the Bora. Stability, I'm gonna give it a th two. <laughs> I think that there should be some type of bracing that goes in here. If it had like a cross brace or an X brace under there, it would really shore this up quite a bit because left to right, it doesn't shake a lot, but front and back is quite, uh, it's not like it's gonna fall down, it's just wiggly. As far as accessories go, I'm gonna give this a four because I did get the one with the track and the protractor. That is extremely useful and one of those things that you really will take a lot of advantage of. I know my friend uses his a ton. Uh, he has a table saw right beside it, but he uses the MFT a lot to make a bunch of cross cuts. It's just a really handy option to have in the shop. So who wins the workbench battle? Well, we've tallied up the results and here they are. On the Works Pegasus, it scored, remember, five ease of use, five space saving, three on stability and three on accessories. That gives us a total of 16 for the Works Pegasus. Next up was the Bora Centipede. We rated it a five on ease of use, five on space savings, five on stability, and then two on accessories because that's where it was lacking. That gives us a total of 17. Then we did the Ryobi Speed Bench. We give it a four on ease of use, five on space saving, three on stability, and two on accessories. That comes in at a total of 14. All right, so on the Outlaws Workbench, I gave it a three on ease of use, four on space savings, four on stability, and three on accessories. That comes in at 14, but I could be ranking it high because I'm biased. You let me know. All right, on the Festo MFT, this is, I like this one a lot, but it does have a few issues here on the ease of use. We'll be giving it a three just because it was a little more difficult to set up. F space savings, I'll give it a four. It does fold flat, so that's a bonus. On stability, I did give it a two because it does wiggle and shake quite a bit, uh, about like maybe even more than the Ryobi. And then of course, accessories of four because there are those attachments available for it that come with my model, which gives it a grand total of 13, which brings up the bottom of the pack. So the winner here is the Bora as far as all around usefulness, in my opinion. If you'd like to check out any of these work tables, I'll link them in the description and the pinned comment to help you find them easier. If I'm picking my favorite out of the three for actual woodworking, I would go with the MFT only because of that track saw being able to be used on there. If you don't have a track saw, then it's not gonna benefit you. But man, is that thing so, so nice, so accurate, such clean cuts. That is my pick personally, but I'm a giant festival fanboy and I admit that. 
Other than that, if you're not into the Festool system, I would go with the Bora Centipede. I think that's probably the best of the bunch, probably best for most people, in my opinion. That's the one I would pick up. They're not crazy expensive for what you're getting, a expandable, portable workbench that you can use basically anywhere and then put that up and save the space. That's probably one I would pick for most people. If you'd like to see how I made the portable workbench, Outlaw's portable workbench, right there it's the video, click in the box to get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also, the full Ryobi review on their workbench right there.